Hey everybody, welcome into the Del Marva Sports Insider, the only live and local show dedicated to giving you all local sports all the time. I am sports director Brandon Bossert. Hey, what is up everyone? I am Devin J. Martin. Welcome into the show. As always, we got a lot to get into tonight, Brandon. Looking very fresh there. Thank Devin. you. you. I really good. appreciate it. Getting, getting ready getting, for the spring sports yes, season. Yes, we're going to be outside, so I, I got to get ready to get, you know, be fresh and just get out there and get the get the gun, the sun glistening while I'm watching the kids play. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's an exciting time of year. Year. The kids hitting the fields, getting ready for spring sports out there. Yeah, I'm, as I said, I'm really excited to get outside. It's going to be my first spring sports season here on Del Marva. Get that warm air, see what it's like here in Maryland, because you know where I'm coming from in Maine, it's still below 40 degrees up there right now to this day. Well, you know what? You got lucky because normally this time of year it's cold, it's windy, but it was absolutely beautiful, beautiful. today. Yeah, it for sure some was. Baseball, loved it, loved it. Yeah, our camera crews were out at a few scrimmages across the peninsula looking for some uh, scouting reports reports on some of the best baseball teams that have some high expectations and mention one of those teams Brandon one of those top Henlopen teams from last season was the Sussex Tech Ravens yep that's right and today we got a sneak peek at them taking on Woodbridge and one thing we can say about Tech is the pitching will be deep this season yeah there's freshman uh, Sean Eli with a punch out now there's a, a man on the frame watch the pickoff move he's got him at first Great move to first base. Reminds me of Terry Mulholland from back in the day with the Phillies. Henlopen base runners, your scouting report right there. Stay close to the bag against Sean Eli. Lefty continuing to carve up the Raider lineup. Tex pitching looks pretty good so far. They sure do. And again, the Ravens were also getting it done on the base paths today. A few steals. Tex takes this one fairly easily. We spoke with head coach GL Jefferson in his 13th season about the strengths and weaknesses of his team heading into the regular season. With the senior leadership, you know, they know the, the ins and outs of Sussex Tech baseball. They understand uh, what's needed, what, what, what should be done next. Um, they, know, they know the routine. They know exactly how, you know, the coaching staff and I, you know, like things to go. It's, it's our hitting, right? You know, pitching always is always ahead of hitting, you know, this time of year. Um, so, you know, if we can start stringing together a lot more of those, you know, those hits, you know, two, three hits in, four hits in, in one inning, uh, that would be, that would be uh, the biggest thing that we're, you know, we're currently working on right now. All right, we'll talk about Tech in just a bit, but over in the Bayside, one team we can safely assume will be a top contender in 1A is Colonel Richardson. They won it all just a couple years ago, and today they were hosting Easton. So let's take you out to American Corner. The Colonels would set the tempo on the mound early, and this one just by absolutely dominating Colonel, uh, just absolutely dominating. You see Colonels catching the Warriors swing on a high pitch. And that would be the story for them at the plate, not be able to get much going. And the biggest struggle for the Warriors in this one was the wild pitches. Bases loaded, one out, and the pitch is high. Catcher loses sight of the ball, and Colonels adding another run to increase their lead. And Easton would go to the bullpen to try and right the ship, but the pitching struggles would continue. Yeah, another pitch, but that one's in the dirt. The Colonels getting yet another run on a wild pitch. Colonel would score five of their runs on wild pitches in this one. And uh, they would keep the defense airtight late in the game. Easton with a shot up the middle, but uh, the Colonels with the scoop and the one-handed shot to first, and they get the easy out. Easton would just not be able to keep up with Colonel in this one. But the head coach for the Colonels, Ryan Blanchfield, believes there is still things his team can clean up on and improve going into the regular season next week. We got to avoid the one big inning, you know, um, giving up the easy outs walking and hitting guys, but it's early. You know, we'll clean those things up. Like I said, we're just trying to improve every day. So, Brandon, how about the Parkside Rams? They could make some noise this year in the 2A. On Wednesday, they took on the Woodbridge Blue Raiders. And we're going to pick this one up in the seventh inning. Rams up 2-1. to one. There's the bunt. Everyone is safe on the play, and that was the beginning of a big inning for sure Parkside. Was. Every inch counted in this frame. There's a drive to short, but the play is bobbled. And once again, everyone is safe on this play. Bases loaded and no one out, Brandon. All right, let's see. Very next pitch. Batter is plunked. Get that man some ice. Rams manufacturing a run without sending the ball out of the infield. Still only or uh, nobody out in the inning. And this was the knockout blow for Parkside. Ball drilled deep to the outfield, and it's in for extra bases. A two-run double. The Rams take the scrimmage against Woodbridge, a final score of 8-1. to one. And we spoke with their head coach, Kyle Dahlbert, about the game and his thoughts on the upcoming season. 
We lost a lot of seniors over the last two years. Last two years, we lost almost 20 seniors. This year, we have one. And the rest of our program is all underclassmen. We got, was it, 13 juniors, three sophomores up on varsity, and we got a bunch of young kids down on JV. So I'm real excited, and we got a bunch of good kids. All right, Devin, let's talk about what uh, we saw this week and in going into this baseball season. Uh, I like what I saw out of Tech today. Uh, uh, this is a team that made the state quarterfinals last year. They went 14-3 and three during the regular season. Uh, they lost a couple of dynamic seniors in Cody Dimes and Jason Shockey. Their pitcher-catcher combination have to replace the entire battery. But it looks like they have that starting battery together for this season, very which is something, yeah, yeah, very important, which is something that a lot of teams uh, around here I don't think can say that they have a true starter and a true starting catcher behind the dish. Uh, Jonathan Stokely uh, moves behind the plate. He's got an absolutely dynamic bat taking over for uh, Shockley after last season, and Grant Allen will be the workhorse taking over for Cody Dimes. Uh, Grant was their number two last season, so I think the Tech is in pretty good hands going into the regular season. Uh, right now, their coach said that the pitching is ahead of the offense, which I think is the case for a lot of different teams. Uh, but Tech will be a team to watch in the Henlopen, along with a lot of traditional powers, such as Cape Henlopen, Dover, and even Central, who made some noise last season. And you make a great point in terms of just the, the chemistry, in terms of having the same starting pitcher and catcher, and that will play off in the long run and the regular season. So right, I'm, in high school baseball, that can be the difference maker right. for a lot of teams. And the team I'm interested in, we just covered them in terms of Colonel Richardson, uh, see what they're going to do in the 1A this season. As I said before, they won it all a few seasons ago. So, and even though it was a scrimmage today, they showed a great, a, a lot of great discipline because they only had a few, a few minimal errors while capitalizing a lot on Easton's miscues in that game. Yeah, and that's the thing about scrimmages. Uh, you go out there, you make your mistakes, you find out what you got to clean up on for Easton. Obviously, get the ball over the dish right. to the catcher. Don't give up those easy runs. Yeah. And you know what? If you clean up those little mistakes, right. they'll make a big difference Instead of throughout the course of the season. foot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, now it's not just baseball that we're gearing up for. Lacrosse season gets underway next week as well. One local athlete is realizing his dream of playing college lacrosse for the Salisbury Seagulls. And Brandon, he might be one of the best local lacrosse stars, but he also got a shot of the year in soccer. We broke, we spoke with Brady Mancha for this week's After the Whistle, brought to you in part by Avery Hall Insurance. Uh, I tried them all. I tried baseball, I tried football, but I just fell in love with soccer and lacrosse. Brady Mancha went from a nervous freshman with Parkside Soccer and Lacrosse, just hoping to make the varsity squad, to one of the top dual sport athletes in the Bayside. His first love was soccer, and the highlight of his career came in his final high school game, scoring the goal that brought home Parkside's first ever Boys Soccer State Championship. It's honestly a scary feeling because if I miss this, it's not the end of the world because it's still 0-0, but if I make it, then I'm kind of like the hero. It's just, it's unreal. Like, the feeling was just crazy. It just felt like it wasn't even real. And would you believe it if I told you he's an even better lacrosse player? It's been a dream of his for years to play for Jim Berkman at Salisbury University. Ever since I was younger, I used to do clinics with Coach Berkman, and ever since then, I've just looked up to him and always wanted to play for him. Uh, I think I visited him uh, might have my sophomore year, and he just told me all a bunch of things about leadership and working hard and stuff. For Mancha, his dream will become a reality next spring. Brady will don the burgundy and gold and play for the top lacrosse program at the Division III level right down the road from Parkside. He can expect to play for championships with the Gulls, but before that, he has some unfinished business with the Rams in his final high school campaign. I mean, my thoughts are good. I'm thinking we're going to have a really good team. We're going to have a good chance of going to Baysides and hopefully making a part in the playoffs. Can't wait to see him back on the lacrosse field this spring. Yep. Mancha's mom, Susan, was an athlete at Salisbury as well. And she played field hockey and has been inducted into the school's Hall of Fame. So, so it runs in the, the blood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The apple don't fall far from the tree. That is right. And you'll be able to see Brady on the lacrosse field for his senior season starting next week, as, we, as we've been saying earlier. Yeah, that's right. And that'll do it for the A Block. We're taking a commercial break. But when we return, we are wrapping up the Bayside basketball season. All-Star Game, postseason honors, and more coming up next.
Hi, my name is Therese Worthy. I play corner and running back at Parkside High School, and you are now watching Delmarva Sports Insider.